next speaker is um, Shekufe Hedayeti from uh, Penn State University. Shekufe is a graduate student and uh, we're excited to hear her talk. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, really glad to be here. Let me share my screen. Um, let me just... Okay. Um, um, hello, everyone. Again, my name is Chico. Um, I'm going to talk about a project that we've been uh, working on uh, for about a year. Its title is Encoding Complex Shapes in Memory, the VAE BP Model of Working Memory. However, as we've been working on this, uh, we came up with a new title. Uh, so I guess my animation is not working. Um, sorry about that. Um, is it is it because it's in the presentation mode? Oh, it's working now. Please share your screen. We don't have your screen now. Okay. Okay, let's do it this way. Okay, great, now it's working. Do you have my screen? Okay, so as we've been working on this, we came up with a, uh, with a new title that is TLDR, Transforming Latent Descriptors in Memory Representations. So whenever I uh, refer to TLDR, um, uh, I mean the model uh, that I'm proposing here. Uh, so current models of, of working memory, the questions that they're concerned with is about uh, what is the capacity of working memory? How many items can be represented in working memory? Uh, how this precision varies? If the set size increases, how are features bound? Uh, however, what is missing is that uh, most of these models do not use real-world stimuli. So they use things like um, uh, colored square or oriented bar rather than a more ecologically valid stimuli that we're going to use in our model. Uh, and also uh, the importance uh, of visual knowledge has not been paid attention to. Uh, so uh, these models do not uh, really allow for um, encoding uh, of familiar versus unfamiliar items, the things that we draw from our visual knowledge at the th or, and the things that we haven't seen before. The importance of visual knowledge has already been considered in more descriptive non-computational models. For example, a multi-component theory, uh, Battle and Hitch, um, they had uh, episodic long-term memory and visual semantics as subsystems of, of the working memory. And also uh, the activated long-term uh, memory theory um, says that working memory is nothing but an activated part of uh, the long-term memory. Uh, and also the importance uh, and the impact of visual knowledge in working memory has already been uh, shown in neural and behavior experiments. Uh, for example, Chinese reader uh, can remember more Chinese char characters than non-Chinese reader or German uh, readers, for example, as you can see in uh, Zimmer and Fischer data. Um, and also there are brain evidence showing that um, uh, regions responsible for working memory, they show uh, reduced bold activity uh, when items are familiar versus when they are unfamiliar. Uh, so here we are going to propose a computational model, TLDR, that accounts for how visual knowledge impact working memory encoding. Uh, what are the behavioral characteristics of TLDR? Uh, it is reconstructive. So if we show people this image, uh, they're able to draw that image uh, from their memory as Carmichael did in 1929. Um, the, uh, the model can focus on relevant attributes. Uh, so uh, for example, there was a study uh, showing that if people are shown with um, an oriented arrow with a color and they're asked about its color for 25 trials because they haven't been focusing on its orientation uh, in a surprise trial when they're asked to report the orientation, uh, they don't have a good memory for that. So their memory for orientation is poorer. Uh, and also, uh, uh, and the, the working memory can remember novel stimuli. So as Lake and colleague did, uh, they showed people uh, different stimuli from uh, different characters from different language that people were not familiar with and haven't seen that specific configuration before, uh, but people were able to sort of draw that uh, characters from their memory uh, with, with some variations. 
Uh, what are the neural uh, plausibility of, of the model? Uh, so uh, it has rapid encoding, the rapid forgetting, which is one of the important characteristics of all working memories because uh, it's been shown that working memory is, um, uh, the information working memory is stored in activations rather than synaptic weights and that allows for uh, rapid encoding of removing information. Um, also, it's consistent with the structure of the visual system as we go higher in uh, the, a ventral stream from V1 to uh, V2 to IT cortex, uh, the representation becomes more complex uh, and abstract. Uh, and also visual knowledge part of the model um, is formed through synaptic weight adjustments. Uh, so just how um, humans, uh, human visual system is being trained uh, through adjusting of synaptic weights uh, by seeing a lot of visual examples in, throughout their lives. Uh, there are two important elements of the TLDR. Uh, one is uh, the visual uh, semantic one or the variational uh, visual knowledge one or the variational autoencoder or I call it VAE uh, that has an encoder and a latent space and decoder. So in the, in, in the encoder, uh, when image comes in, it's, it's encoded into the model and then there is a, it's compressed form. Um, it's represented in the latent space and then the decoder learns to decode that information and reconstruct it in the output. Uh, and that was proposed by Kim Manuel in 2013. Uh, that's gonna be the, the visual knowledge part of our model. However, we did some uh, changes to this original uh, model. And also a binding pool, uh, which was a memory model uh, first um, uh, done by Swan and Weibel in 2014. Uh, so we need to have a binding pool uh, that uh, allows for encoding information because the VAE itself cannot uh, hold uh, multiple objects. Uh, so uh, this is the memory part of the model that can um, encode multiple objects. And then they are later they are um, connected together in the way that I'm gonna talk about more details. Uh, so uh, the binding pool component, um, uh, it has a type layer that represents high level uh, features. For example, for this oriented um, bar, bar over here, it has a color and location and orientation that are represented in, in the type layer. Uh, there is a token that index um, and individuates objects uh, and can keep track of multiple items. Without tokens, we cannot store more than uh, one item or retrieve more than one item in, in the binding pool. And the binding pool layer, um, uh, is the shared resource pool uh, that encodes the information. Uh, and the variational autoencoder, as I said, we, make, we made some changes to it. Uh, so we trained this model uh, on uh, shape and color separately. Uh, we divided the latent space to shape and color maps uh, so that we can uh, represent shape in the shape map and color in the color map. And the reason to do this was uh, to sort of being able to focus on certain attributes um, and store them uh, into the memory, to be able to implement a top-down control and decide which attribute uh, should go to working memory because working memory is uh, kind of selective to that. Uh, so the, the, this is the architecture of the whole model and the way that interacts with the binding pool. So the upside is the visual knowledge or the VAE modified VAE on the bottom is the binding pool. Uh, imagine that this image uh, uh, handwritten for uh, comes into the model. It generates some activations in the layer one and this activation is projected through fixed random weights to the binding pool. And then again, uh, with, uh, in, with an inverse multiplication, it goes back to the L1 and is reconstructed through the model. And this is how the reconstruction is. And again, we tested this with, with different layers with L2. So L2 projects to the binding pool and goes back and reconstructed also color and shape maps. And we wanted to see which one has a better, uh, you know, efficient reconstruction. Just talking about uh, more about the details, uh, the stimuli that we used were uh, MNIST digits. We colorized them with 10 different colors. So we ended up having 10 categories of digits from zero to nine and uh, 10 categories of colors, uh, red, yellow, blue, et cetera. 
Uh, and uh, to train the model, we uh, train the shape map with a shape objective function that minimizes the loss on gray images. And a color for the color map, we train the model on um, using color objective function that minimizes loss on uniform color patches. And at, um, at each batch training, only one of these objective functions were active. And then later they, they were combined, uh, these shape and color information are combined in the later levels. So for example, this is an example of the training procedure. Uh, so this, these are the MNIST images that are going to the model. And then um, these are the reconstructions uh, from both maps. As you can see, this is the reconstruction from only the color map. So if I set the shape map to zero, then this is what I get from the color map. Uh, so it's gonna be color of the original images with no specific shape information. You get just a bunch of fives. Um, and then uh, this is how the reconstruction from shape maps looks like. So you have the shape information with no really color information. Um, so we kind of separated these representations in the latent space. But how the memory retrievals look like. Um, so these were just reconstructions. So imagine that I have only WS um, active over here, uh, meaning that I, pro I uh, project only shape map activations to the binding pool encode actually shape activations to the binding pool uh, and I reconstruct them and this is how um, the, the reconstruction looks like. This is the memory retrieval uh, from shape map and uh, this is the memory retrieval from color map and this is going to be the memory retrieval from both maps at the same time. Also layer one and layer two. Um, so for L2, this is the memory retrieval from L2 and this is the memory retrieval from L1. Uh, they do not have good resolution as the latent space. And we also tested this quantitatively. Uh, so uh, we had four radial basis function, um, uh, four radial basis function kernel SVMs that were trained on uh, the latent space. Uh, SVM SS were shape map activations trained on shape labels. And the accuracy uh, for the memory retrieval after it was projected to bind, encoded into a binding pool and then retrieved was um, almost 76%. Uh, we had SVMSC shape map activations trained on color labels. So this was to ensure that there's no color information in the shape map and the accuracy was like 12%. Uh, SVMCC uh, color map activations trained on color labels, um, that was uh, that was pretty good again, 84%. And then SVM uh, CS, uh, that was 17%, meaning that there was no shape information in the color map. Um, and also L2 and L1. So we L2 and L1, you saw the reconstructions brand is good. Also, uh, the classifier accuracy is much lower, uh, as you can see in these columns. And for L1, it's even worse than L2. Uh, so working memory performance is better, better when information is received in its most compressed or abstract form as it is represented in the latent space. We also tested the model with encoding categorical labels. Uh, so uh, for example, for a given image of a blue um, or teal um, uh, one, um, we had uh, we extracted the label and using a softmax softmax uh, function and one hot coding, we encoded uh, both color and shape labels into the binding pool, and, and we realized that the model can store categorical labels with 100% accuracy, along with the visual information in just one memory trace. Now we're uh, part of encoding novel shapes. So um, I, I talked about uh, the memory uh, can't store novel information. Uh, so this part is interesting. Uh, we showed the model uh, Bengali characters. Uh, it, this model was trained only in MNIST uh, data set. It was like handwritten digits. Uh, and these were the original images. Uh, so if, if I reconstruct these images from the latent space, uh, meaning that I encode that information um, from the latent space to the binding pool and then retrieve it, this is how the reconstruction would look like. So the VAE would give me only um, uh, digits because that's uh, what it's been trained on. However, if I create a skip connection uh, from layer one to layer five um, after the input layer and before the output layer uh, and train it, and then when I reconstruct it directly from the model, this is how the reconstruction would look like, which is more similar to the original images. And if I um, encode that layer one activations to the binding pool and then reconstruct it, 
this is how the reconstruction would look like. So the L1 um, is, is the best layer to reconstruct the novel information, but for familiar information, it was better to um, encode that from the latent space to the binding pool. In the end, uh, I, we proposed here a model of memory with visual knowledge. Uh, the model was reconstructive. So for a given image, it could reconstruct the image. It could focus on a relevant attribute, whether shape or its color, and also remember a novel stimuli like a Bengali character over here. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you, Shikufe, uh, for the great talk. Um, we don't have much time for question, but we can take um, this one. Um, so Brad asked that um, ELA and collaborators uh, have adapted noisy um, channel theorem for working memory. Does that make contact with uh, how you're thinking about binding pool or latent space? Noisy channel theorem. Um, well, um, yeah, well, I am not quite familiar with uh, that specific work. Uh, but I'm really interested to see uh, what that is about. Um, uh, but I think the, the binding pool um, idea is that, yes, so there is like a...